Space, Carnesville Air Force Base, Fort Worth, Texas. Time, the pre-dawn hours of March 5th, 1962. The day the Strategic Air Command will give its most convincing demonstration of the potential built into its newest and fastest manned weapon system, the B-58 Hustler. For today, a lone B-58, her three-man flight crew, her able ground crew, all members of SAC's 43rd Bomb Wing, will make an assault on three transcontinental speed records. Piloting the Hustler will be Captain Robert G. Sowers, hometown Lexington, North Carolina. The navigator, Captain Robert McDonald from Creskill, New Jersey. And the defense systems operator, Captain John T. Walton, a native of Greenville, Kentucky. The high professional caliber of these three men stands as a symbol for the thousands who make up our strategic combat crews, who through the routine of day-to-day -day training continually strive to narrow the margin for error, to attain that extra degree of proficiency to keep the balance of air power in our favor. But today's flight is far from routine. By nightfall, if successful, their achievement will be common knowledge to most of the civilized world. With darkness still blanketing the field, the B-58 lifts off the Carswell runway and takes up a westward heading for Los Angeles, starting point for its race to New York. Directing the event known under the code name Operation Heat Rise is Headquarters Strategic Air Command Omaha. As nerve center of this nation's deterrent fight, SAC will be watching with vital interest every aspect in the performance of its unique supersonic bomber. Received a full load of fuel off the Pacific coast, Captain Sowers follows the tanker in over Los Angeles to the starting gate. Aboard the tanker is an official of the National Aeronautics Association who will validate the start of the run visually. For backup, radar at Los Angeles International Airport will track the B-58 to the starting point. On hand is an NAA team together with a representative of the Air Force. Their job is to verify the time registered by their airborne colleague. Okay, Mike, get a good hack on the start. We're coming up on the starting gate. We're starting point. Ready. Ready. against time is on. Before the day is done, the B-58 will have flown a distance of over 4,500 miles, announcing its arrival with a continuous sonic boom over every mile. gaining momentum as it flashes across the desert lands of Southern California, the Hustler nears peak velocity as it streaks over the natural wonders of Arizona 50,000 feet below.
elapsed time, Los Angeles to Grand Canyon, 16 minutes flat. Okay, we're at Mach 2 now. Roger, CG checks 33%. We're 600 pounds above the curve. We're running 14 seconds ahead of flight plan. With the thrust of four powerful engines now fully unleashed, cities and towns along the flight path are devoured by a sustained pace of Mach 2, better than 1,200 miles per hour. As the bomber penetrates to the central United States, its stride is checked briefly for replenishment of fuel. Mac, give me a rendezvous time. Roger, ETA rendezvous, 1743. Okay, John, uh, relay this to the tanker through SAC headquarters. Uh, Roger. Drop kick, drop kick. And this is Tall Man 55, over. Dodge Tall Man 55, this is Drop Kick, over. Roger, Drop Kick, Tall Man 55. Cast it down, 1 3. Rendezvous time, 1743, Zulu, over. Roger, tall man, 55. Five. Chum, 1 3, this is drop kick. Oh. Chum, 1 3, this is drop kick. Estimated rendezvous, tall man, 55. Thank you. 